Hi everyone, this is Heather Smith with Storyville Photography, and today I'm going to show you how to achieve this edit. You guys, I took this at a sunflower farm, and this was their actual checkout. When I saw it, I just knew I had to snag some pictures there. It was so, so cute. Anyway, this is where we are going to get started, and this is where we are going to finish. I used the Canon R5 and the 200mm 2.0f, and my settings were 2.0f, 320 ISO and 640 shutter speed. I took this around sunset. Um, okay, so the first thing I did was I opened this image into Lightroom and all I did was apply the simplicity preset number one. And the reason why I'm not showing you this time is because I opened it up in Photoshop and I replaced my daughter. Not a good look for her and I don't want to bore you with the details with that. Um, so even though this counter is extended, the your client or whatever is not going to notice because your image is just going to turn out so beautifully edited and it looks like it's part of the counter in my opinion so there we go i'm going to go ahead and go to layer and flatten and the first thing i'm going to do is make a copy of this background layer by hitting command j and you guys, when all said and done, including the Lightroom simplicity that I used, I'm going to stack this preset four times. I will make adjustment to the opacity on a couple of them, but I just love the effect with stacking this preset. And you get almost this HDR effect. Um, I just love it. So here we go. Camera raw. Move that in. I'm going to come into my preset panel and I'm going to go to simplicity five. Hit OK. And the great thing about using the presets in Photoshop is you can adjust the opacity to your liking right here and you can mask the preset off wherever you don't want it. So for here, I'm going to go ahead and add a layer mask, use a soft black brush, and in this case, I'm going to use um, at about 40%. And I'm just going to brush it off of the legs a little bit so their skin doesn't look blown out, just ever so slightly. There we go. So that's the before and after with the Simplicity 5. And I'm gonna flatten that. And I'm gonna go ahead and make another copy, Command J. And you guessed it, we're going back up. Camera Raw Filter. And this time I'm gonna um, select Simplicity number six. And then I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 72%. And that's the before and after with Simplicity 6 added into the mix. And now I'm going to flatten that. Layer, flatten. And this time I'm going to make a, another copy of the background layer. I'm going to come into the ACR filter. And I'm going to pull my shadows up by about 43%. And that's the before and after with the shadows pulled up. Flatten the image again. And then I am going to go ahead and copy the background layer. <laughs> We're almost done with the ACR filter, guys, I promise. Camera raw. Come into here. And this time I'm going to choose simplicity number four. And as you can see, it's like really bright and looking weird, but we're going to adjust that. I'm just going to put this on ever so slightly. I'm going to crank the opacity down to about 24%. And that is the before and after. And again, you guys can add layer masks, mask these off certain areas. Like I'm going to mask it off a little bit of her leg there. Again with the 40% and just kind of take some of the brightness away. Okay, before and after. And now I'm going to flatten this image again. And I am going to make a copy, and I want to get rid of the dark circles under my sweet girl's eyes. Everybody's got them, um, and sometimes editing can exaggerate them. What I grabbed is the patch tool over here. I'm going to zone in a little bit. It's such a sweet little face. I am a biased, but <laughs> just love it. Okay. And then you can also adjust the opacity if you want a little bit left on there or whatever you'd like. Um, and this little here, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to keep it at 100%. Let's 
Let's see my little guy. I say he looks okay there. We're going to keep him as is. And then it, if you can tell, my daughter here was a slightly out of focus, but overall you really can't, when you're zoomed out, notice. So I decided to go ahead and edit it anyway. <laughs> and I just love how it turned out. And you can do the patch tool with any um, imperfections along with the spot healing or cologne. There's just so much that Photoshop offers. And now I want to warm the image up just a little bit. So I am going to go into my image toning and I'm going to do the warm up, hit play. And I'm going to turn this down to about like, I don't know, 25% looks good to me. So here is the before and after of that. I just love the tone that it brings and it helps bring a little warmth to a whole image, obviously. That's why it says warming up. And now I wanna pull your attention right to my subjects. So to do that, I'm gonna come into my image base and I'm gonna hit play. And the only thing I wanna use here is the darkened edges. And I'm actually gonna pull that up to 100%. And that's the before and after. And it just draws your attention right there um, to the subjects. Now I want to find my ultimate dodge and burn, one of my most favorite actions that I have. Hit play. And guys, I still am getting messages about this action. So I like to group them together. And I like you to have the option of masking all of the groups off in one uh, layer there if you need it. So. I have one big group and then there's three small groups. You choose which one you want to work in and then you use your white brush at whatever opacity you want. I normally choose 100% and adjust what I um, want in the opacity here. And then you click on the black layer mask and paint on. It's really easy, but you must open the groups. Okay, what I'm going to be mostly using here is the dodge. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm just going to go over some areas that I want kind of brightened up. And if you want to have um, like different layers for each of your subjects, before you start painting on, just hit Command J and it will duplicate um, any of these layers and you can do it as many times as you want. Okay, and that looks good to me there. So this is the dodging, dodge only. And then I'm gonna come into here to dodge one and I'm gonna go ahead and brighten up their skin. It's gonna paint on strong, um, but I'm gonna turn it down after. So make sure that's selected. A lot, right guys? Um, but it's great to see where you're painting. And then you kind of just turn it up to where your eye likes it. And that about does it for me. That looks good. And same thing here. You are welcome to copy the layers and have one for each of your subjects if you wish. Okay. Before and after. Now I'm gonna go into the environment. Let me zoom out a little bit here. I only want to dodge here, I think. I might have to <laughs> burn um, too, but we're going to start out with the dodge. It's been a while since I edited this image about a year ago because it just popped up on Facebook memories. And for whatever reason, I didn't save the raw. So if any tone is like slightly different or the image is not like 100%, we're going to get it dang close. But there may be a little bit of differences um, in here because I just... I had to go back through and kind of figure out what I did. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start with Dodge. I'm going to make an extra copy just in case. I like to have it on hand there. And I'm going to go over some of the background. And I just love what it does. It really makes certain things pop out. And don't worry, we'll get rid of that trash <laughs> hanging out right there. I wish I would have noticed it when I was taking um, the pictures, but I was so in the zone, it just, you know, made a little bit more work in the post, but it's so worth it. 
but it is important to pay attention to your background. I wish I would have figured that out before I started snapping away and just moved the stuff. We got a little blue guy over here too. Okay. That looks good there. I'm gonna hit the extra dodge copy because I only want, you can also duplicate, like say you wanted all the same things um, dodged, you can duplicate it and then you can adjust the opacity. But here I only want a few things um, dodged more, if that makes sense, not everything. So I'm gonna click on my second copy and just go over certain things. A Little bit of the background here. How fun is this, guys? I just love it. Okay, and that looks good to me before and after with all of the dodging that I did. Now I'm gonna come back over to my actions and I'm gonna use a little bit of matte. Um, this is part of the Dreamy Matte Pack, um, basic matte. And I wanna turn this all the way down to about like 15%. Again, you can just start at zero and kind of see where your eye likes it. 14, 15, um, there we go, before and after. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and flatten all that. And I'm gonna come into my adjustments, hue and saturation. I'm gonna take the eyedropper, and I'm gonna come over here to that blue like trash can and just desaturate it. Come on. Oh, it's on zero. I don't know why that happened. Okay, to saturate the blue, and I'm gonna invert it, Command I, use my soft white brush at 100% opacity and just paint it on there. And then it kind of just blends in. Nobody's gonna really um, realize it's there. Here is kind of like a sloppy, lazy way of doing this. Uh, I'll be quick and I will show you what I'm talking about. You're gonna be like, I can't believe she just did that. How lazy and ridiculous is that? But it worked. So I'm just gonna select part of this tree. Command copy, Command V to paste it, Command T to move it. And I'm just gonna start at the bottom. There we go. And you guys, I'm gonna just copy and stack it all the way up. So Command J, Command T to move it. There we go. Come on. Sorry, my Photoshop is like running ridiculously slow. I don't know why that's not entering, but. Okay, copied it again. Command T. Just moving it on up. Command J, Command T. Okay, try not to spend too much time on this, guys. And then what I'm gonna do is group them all together by holding down the shift and clicking on the bottom layer, grouping it together, adding a layer mask. And because I wanna kinda see where I'm gonna mask this off, and again, right now, this is far from perfect. I'm trying to do it relatively quick to not bore you guys. I'm gonna grab the soft brush, but I'm gonna move it up to 50% hardness. That's gonna help me get a cleaner line without it being too distinct. Zoom in, zoom out, okay. And then I'm just gonna try and mask it as best as I can, as quick as I can. But guys, spend time on the little details like this. Don't rush through it like I am right now. And then just by using the X um, key, you can go back and forth from your right, um, your white and your black brush, and it's very helpful. Turning up the opacity, and as you can see, this is a sloppy mask job, but I don't wanna spend too much time on it. So here we go. I'm just gonna leave it like this. It's so hard to like stop when you know it's not perfect, but okay before and after, and you can also add a little bit of blur on it if you want um, to help blend it a little bit more, but no more gross trash over there, and it just looks so much better. Now I wanna add a little bit of blush to their cheeks, so I'm gonna come back into my action, and I'm gonna find my retouch, um, rosy cheeks, play. I'm gonna open up the group, 
and I'm going to go for the radiant red. I want to turn this down um, and grab a saw, the hardness completely zero. Just going to touch on there. And it just adds a little bit of color to the cheeks. You can also duplicate if you want to use the same um, color, but different opacities for each of your subjects. Or you can go ahead and use a different one. And that's all I'm going to do there. She looks rosy enough. There we go, before and after. And now I want to add a sparkle overlay to the ground there. So out of the sparkle overlay pack, I'm going to grab one drag and drop it, or you can go to File, Open, and then type in what you want. I'm going to set it to Soft Light. Command T will let you move it, and you can adjust the sizing of it just by pulling um, on one of the corners there. There we go. And I want to get rid of the coloring, so I'm going to go to the Adjustments, the hue and saturation, and I'm going to hit this little um, box with the downward arrow so it's only going to affect this overlay. I'm going to turn the saturation completely down. And then I'm going to have a layer mask. You can either, ah, either brush it off um, with the black mask or you can paint it on wherever you'd like by inverting it. So just to keep things simple, I'm going to take my brush and just mask it off right there. You can leave a little on the the tree situation that we did, just make sure you get rid of your um, distinct line that you will have, unless you have it on top of the whole image, then you won't. So that's the before and after. It just adds a little bit of sparkle, and I just love sparkle. Okay, now I want to flatten, layer flatten, and we're going to do some liquefying. Command J, and I'm going to go into my filter, liquefy. Zoom this in a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is poof up our hair just a little bit. I like to use this forward warp tool. These are my settings. You can play with them or whatever that suits you best. I tend to just leave them on that settings for most of it. There we go. Now she's got a little bit more body to her hair. And my daughter <laughs> does not have a gut by any means, and even if she did, she'd be absolutely perfect. But the dress kind of poofed out right here, so I just want to pull that in a little bit. And if you are feeling really fancy, you can kind of use this to make her dress more flowy, but I'm just going to leave it as is. So there we go. That's the before and after. And I just noticed there's a little bit of blue in between my daughter's legs right there too. And it's kind of distracting me. So again, I'm going to take the eyedropper and just turn that down. Soft, white brush, 100% opacity, command I to invert the mask and paint on with the white. Okay, and the last thing I want to do is I just want to bring down the midtones a little bit. So I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer and just pull down ever so slightly on the midtones, and take a soft black brush, 100% opacity. I'm going to make it big enough just to cover um, my subjects and tap on. So that's the before and after there. Um, and that I think about does it guys. So this is the before where we started. And that's the after. It's kind of nice to have a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, anyway, you can find everything I used here at www.storybuildphotography.com. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye, guys.